Now, Greenland's ice sheet is melting at an alarming rate, seven times faster than in the 1990s. New analysis of satellite data shows it's losing about 250 billion tons of ice every year, and the losses are continuing to accelerate. Since 1992, meltwater from Greenland has raised global sea levels by one centimeter, and that puts millions more people at risk from flooding. Well, let's speak now to Andrew Shepard, who's a professor of Earth Observation at the University of Leeds and was the lead, one of the lead authors of that study, and he joins us now on Skype from Leeds. Professor, let's start with the rate of ice loss here, because it's not just the fact that the ice is melting, it's that it's melting much, much faster than we thought it would, right? So now what we thought was the worst-case scenario is actually the middle-of-the-road scenario. Now we need a worst-case scenario, a new one? Uh, that's, that's correct. Um, it takes a long time to collect enough measurements to be able to check uh, climate model predictions. But now we have two or three decades. And it's really clear that the course that uh, Greenland and, in fact, Antarctica as well are following is the worst case scenario. So uh, that means more sea level rise than people are expecting. And what's driving all of this ice loss? So in Greenland, it's two things. It's the, the air around the ice sheet is too warm and it's melting ice from the surface. And the ocean around the ice sheet is too warm and that's causing the glaciers which uh, carve icebergs into the sea to, to flow more quickly. Well, let's also talk about impacts here, because we've run through some numbers. But by my understanding, the loss of the Greenland ice sheet doesn't just mean sea level rise, but it could also increase global warming fairly dramatically because of the re release of methane from the melted earth and then less heat being reflected from the sun back into space when there's no snow. So when you put all of this together, are we approaching a tipping point here? Uh, tipping points are interesting things for people to speculate about, but I think the story that we're trying to tell people today is that this is uh, predicted climate change and this will still have a serious impact on a, a large number of people. Just the regular melting of the Greenland ice sheet. We don't need to invo invoke um, um, potential situations like tipping points. Um, this is happening now uh, and we do need to do something about it. Well, as we were saying, this is also happening much more quickly than we expected. So what's the reason for the conservatism in the science and the reports over the years that's led to this point? So the science actually hasn't been conservative. It's, it's always presented a, a, a regular and a lower and a worst case scenario. Um, but the, uh, the, I guess the politicians have, have chosen to favor the, the mid, mid scenario and not the worst case, but for the polar ice sheets, it's the latter, and um, that has big consequences for sea level. We've been talking about sea level rise, but could this also have consequences for weather patterns and potential more extreme weather events around the world? So these things are all related to one another. And in fact, it is those extreme weather events coupled with sea level rise which are going to cause the flooding. It's not, it's not the steady increase in sea level around the world that will eventually inundate very low-lying areas. So what happens when we get storms in, in winter, just before winter in autumn, um, and those surges, uh, they're, they're manageable now. They only flood our coastal regions once every few years, but it will become much more frequent in the future. Well, you've been studying this now for years, and this week leaders are meeting in Madrid. Are you optimistic that we, as humanity, are going to be able to come together and face this crisis in time? I, I always think it's important to retain hope. But um, Greta Thunberg said this morning at the COP meeting, uh, she asked, where are the leaders? And, it, and it's true, where are the leaders? In the UK, we have an election right now, and our prime minister is the only person who refused to participate in the climate change debate. His plan for, for our country is to build more roads. That, that's exactly the opposite thing that we need. And so going forward, I guess, we're all going to have to try to hold on to what hope we have. Thank you for joining us, Andrew Shepard from the University of Leeds. Thank you.